Peter Reed, that problem is rare. Before we use homeopathic treatments, we were getting about 30 to 40 cases of mastitis, clinical cases of mastitis, every year. Since we've been using homeopathic treatments, remedies, we are down to as low as six a year now, which is very rare that we get a case. We can always put it down to a cow having a blow from another cow, either being kicked or bunted in the other. Never from just a normal clinical case. Cattle on other farms have also been getting Christopher Day's homeopathic treatments. Again, it seems, with good results. We've been using uh, homeopathic medicine for about six years on the farm here now and gradually increasing it over that time. Oh, we find it very effective in many cases. Not totally effective, but uh, in many cases very effective. In, in some problems that we have on the farm, we have a disease called New Forest Eye, which is a disease of the eye that cattle get. And there I would describe it as a miracle cure, no doubt about it. With New Forest Eye in cattle, and if you look at the, <coughs> cow, the cows here, the conventional treatment would be shots of antibiotic underneath the eyelid every day for four or five days. Now those animals would have to be caught, held and injected. You know, they're big animals and in some cases you could be talking about 30 or 40 animals a day. Now with the homeopathic treatment, it's a case of a few drops of these homeopathic remedies in the water trough daily and that will cure this problem within three or four days. It is a miracle. Chris Day's experience with a number of local farmers like John Gearing has finally convinced him. We found that administering remedies in the water does have a profound effect on chronic diseases within a herd. At what dilution? Again, a 30th centesimal dilution. So, which is 1 in 130 times, or 10 to the minus 60, to give you its mathematical way. So, effectively, you're still giving water? We're still giving submolecular concentrations, quantities, call them what you like, of the remedy, yes. In the water supply? In the water supply, so it's already then being diluted again, <laughs> which is fairly mind-boggling. But I mean, it can be diluted several hundred times again, which is infinitesimal amount compared to what it's already been through. And it appears very effective, and this is very, very repeatable. We have actually done one trial, uh, which we monitored very, very closely in a dairy herd, to see the effects of homeopathy on mastitis. And we split the herd into two groups of 40 cows. And we supplied the farmer with two bottles. One was a, an unmedicated solvent, and the other bottle contained homeopathic treatment. One was labelled A and one was labelled B. So there was no way the farmer knew which bottle was which, which side of the herd, if you like, he was treating, and which side he was just giving solvent to. And we went through the whole winter with him administering small quantities to the water troughs of each side. You know, one side was getting A and one side was getting B throughout the winter. We monitored mastitis occurrences, we monitored the difficulty of curing it, and we monitored all the mastitis parameters within the herd. And what we found actually was most startling in this particular herd, we found one case only of mastitis in the treated herd, and 19 cases in the untreated side. And that was 19 out of 40, so we're talking about a 50% incidence on one side, and one in 40 on the other side. But how can it possibly work? No one seems to be able to explain why it works. I think this is a big problem. I have no problem personally because I've seen it working. And when you remove yourself from the problem of molecules being the only thing that do anything and think more about energies, then the thing starts to make a lot more sense. And you can understand the concept that in producing an energetic change in the body, the body can then get on and heal itself. But how can the chemical energy and information in a substance continue to survive repeated dilutions? One theory to explain homeopathy says that the water the substance is diluted in may somehow have a memory of the original substance. It may be that contained within the water is some form of biophysical imprint. Let me, let me give you a model for this. Water is one substance in one concentration and yet it can take many forms. Water truly is a strange substance. In particular, if you think of snowflakes, 
one substance in one biochemical concentration absolutely identical and yet showing an infinite capacity for variation and form. Every snowflake is unique. Every one of the countless millions of snowflakes and the pattern and the field which maintains that pattern is unique. And so we have an infinite capacity for informational structure, a biochemically identical substance. And so really we're asking, is bio biological information encoded within these solutions, within these water solutions? But the theory is far too revolutionary to be contemplated by orthodox science. The principle that the memory of the molecules resides in the water and that memory lasts a long time and communicates itself to the patient even months after the dilutions were made, that is a different sort of claim in a way because it's really quite contrary to all we know about physics and it's in order to believe that sort of claim then you would have to overturn a large part of physics as we know it at the moment and a large part of pharmacology too but as a consequence. Now one can certainly say that physics has been overturned before. Physics, no science is immutable and uh, it is absolutely true that physics has been overturned many times but it's only overturned when there is a very good reason to do so. The fact is that because the medical establishment thinks homeopathy so implausible, very few convincing clinical trials have been done, and so there's little evidence. But things are beginning to change. A high-powered team at Barts Hospital in London recently organized a proper double-blind clinical trial of homeopathy on fibrocytis. <laughs> So it's a little tender there, is that yeah. right? And it's a condition orthodox medicine finds hard to treat, but this preliminary study showed homeopathy did provide some benefit. Elsewhere, at the Glasgow Royal Infirmary, a similar trial is underway on asthma. Right in, right in, right in, right in, blow pass, push out. Here, four right academic right departments right have right been out. running a full-scale double-blind evaluation of an extremely dilute homeopathic remedy. And the indications are, it too has been successful. But much more research is needed. The scientific community and the medical community cannot turn its back on this controversy. We have to open the doors of our academic establishments and open the minds of our academics uh, to examine this issue. I think that's what the public understands by science. And I think the scientific community must respond to that need. Meanwhile, the foot soldiers of medicine have already stolen a march on the academics. At the homeopathic hospitals, courses in homeopathy are now being offered to people in the front line of orthodox medicine, Britain's general practitioners. And they're becoming increasingly popular. These doctors seem unconcerned that homeopathy cannot work. They simply ask, does it work? And is it better than conventional medicine? It certainly does much less harm than most of the drugs we prescribe. And I would suggest that a, a good doctor might be one who does, uh, as Hippocrates said originally, uh, more good than harm. And I think there are many, doc many of us who do more harm, more harm than good. No one system can solve all problems all the time. Regular medicine solves many problems up to an extent or doesn't deal with very small ones or chronic ones. Homeopathy deals with that and uh, has solved many of them. Well, sometimes you actually use this in children who don't know what they're having, and they improve amazingly fast, much quicker than giving them an antibiotic, for instance. Similarly, in people who are perhaps comatose, they have no idea that they're being given a med medication, and they do improve. So the skeptics that say it doesn't work, um, they must see that the results prove that it does. So is homeopathy magic or medicine? For a small but increasing number of doctors, it seems it's a bit of both. I've no idea why it works, um, but it does seem to work. And uh, I think if it works, you should try it.